Dear learners, greetings from IIT Guwahati. We are in the course Advanced Thermodynamics and Combustions, Module 3, Thermodynamic Property Relations. So, till th this point of time, we have covered two lectures on this module. First one was Thermodynamic Functions and Maxwell Equations. Uh, second one was uh, Property Relations that were derived for a phase change process. In today's class, we will discuss about the property relations that are used for single phase systems. Now, on this uh, lecture, we are going to discuss the following segments. We will give the brief introductions what we have covered till now that is evaluation of property changes, mathematical relations. Then after that, we will move to derivations related to property relations for single phase systems. So, in there are two approaches, one is temperature specific volume relations, other is temperature pressure relations. Then in addition to this, we will also explore uh, the concepts of internal energy equations in the mathematical form and towards the end, we will try to see that whatever you have discussed so far as far as the mathematical expressions, how those uh, concepts can be used for construction of property tables. By uh, construction of property tables, I mean it is for pure substance and uh, we can see that the entire concepts mathematical relations derives in this model will be useful for construction of property tables. Now, let us recall that we have covered uh, the mathematical representations of in total there are 16 property relations that were derived from the concept of exact differentials. Then uh, that 16 property relations includes some of the basic relations, Maxwell equations and additional relations among the properties. Now with respect to phase change process, we derived Clapeyron equations and also Clausius Clapeyron equations. Now we are going to discuss the concepts of those 16 property relations and how we can use those relations for considering or deriving the expressions uh, for single phase regions for pure substance. So, by single phase region I mean for a pure substance there are essentially there are three phases solid, liquid and gas. Now, when you are considering a single phase region, either we are in solid range or solid region or liquid region or gas phase region. Now, in thermodynamically in a single phase region, there are two parameters that are required to fix the state. Now, out of these two parameters has to be considered from the major data. Major data I mean it is pressure, specific volume or density and temperatures. And in this case, uh, the most appropriate choice would be fresh, uh, one we should consider as a temperature as one of the parameter because it caters the heat transfer. Other is either you can take volume or pressures. So, the, with this concept also you have been studied the temperature volume diagram and temperature pressure diagram or pressure volume diagrams that were used for pure substances. Now, we will see how these equations will help us in finding the coordinates in those diagrams. Now, we here we are going to recall some additional properties which are uh, very um, important as far as our ongoing discussions and those properties are coefficient of volume expansion, isothermal compressibility and isentropic compressibility or speed and speed of sound. So, if you see that if you take one particular situations, volume is a function of pressure and temperatures, we can write dV, exact differential of volume which is dou V by dou T at P constant P into dT, dou V by dou P at constant T into dP. So, now here we say the isothermal compressibility kappa, kappa is defined as the negative of change in the volume with respect to pressure at constant temperature divided by the volume, original volume. So, here negative sign means that the pressure and uh, the since it is a compressed phenomena, so, so negative sign is 
used here. Other parameter of interest that we can have is we can have a volume expansivity and or coefficient of volume expansion that is beta. In fact, here the volume change is associated with the change in the temperature but at constant pressures. So, that parameter we say beta is equal to 1 by V dou V by dou T at constant P. Now, apart from this, there is another uh, parameters uh, which we call as isentropic uh, compressibility alpha. So, here the uh, same expression of kappa is used here, but that d dou V by dou P is uh, that partial differentiation takes place at constant entropy. Uh, then from that also we have another property called as speed of sound. So, anyway what I am trying to emphasize is that the exact differentials also help us in defining the many thermodynamic properties of interest. Now, let us focus our attention for considering uh, the property relations for single phase region. First one we say case 1 where we consider the temperature and volume as independent properties to fix the state. So, if you say so, then other parameters like entropy can be regarded as the function of these two parameters. Another point I need to emphasize that when I say temperature and specific volume are independent properties, in a situations both the parameters can vary simultaneously or in some situations also you can keep because th these two are independent in nature. So, you can keep temperature constant very specific volume and vice versa keep specific volume constant very temperatures. So, this is the basic concept that we are going to follow in deriving this relations. So, first thing that we say is that we have to recall our basic governing equations from that is Maxwell equations that is in terms of one of the relations Maxwell equation is dou S by dou V at constant T is equal to dou P by dou T at constant V. Now, as I mentioned that we say temperature and specific volume are independent properties. So, we write S is equal to as a function of temperature and volume. So, from this we can find its exact differential dS that is dou S by dou T at constant V into dT dou S by dou V at constant T into dV. Then we can use this Maxwell relations that is in place of dou S by dou V we can write dou P by dou T at constant V. So, d s equations now comes in this form. Now, another way of representing is that we can say internal energy is another parameters u is a function of temperature and volume. So, we can write the exact differential of d u that is dou u by dou T at constant V into d T and plus dou u by dou V into at constant T into d V. So, we know that what is dou u by dou t that internal energy is a function of temperature at constant volume we say write it is C v d t and dou v by dou t dou u by dou v at constant t remains as it is. So, we have two equations d s and d u. Now, you recall the t d s equations that is d u is equal to one of the t d s equation is d u is equal to t d s minus p d v. Now, what we do now is that we have expressions for d s, we have expressions for d u. Now, d s and d u is placed in this t d s equations and when I do it and, and do some kind of arrangements and um, simplify it, then we have these expressions when one side of the expressions variation is v d v and the other side is variation of d t. So, it means that these two are the independent properties. Now, let us see what is the significance of these equations. First thing is that suppose we can say that when both the parameters are varying then we can use this equations you have to use this equation as it is. But what in a situation that when d v is equal to 0 that means in some situation the changes are happening at constant volume that is change in the specific volume is 0, but temperature is not non-zero. So, in that case the left hand side of the equation becomes 0. So, we get a simplified relations dou s by dou t at constant v will be C v by t. Okay? And in the second situations when dou v is not equal to 0, but d t is equal to 0, then the above equations gets modified 
in the form by as dou u by dou v at constant t is equal to t into dou p by dou t at constant v minus p. Okay, so this is the two important lesson you get. Now again we look into closely about these equations again. There are other expressions that are also can be possible to find out what is ds and du. And that is the essential need of our requirement change in the entropy and change in the internal energy. So, in our previous slides we have derived these two expressions one is ds is equal to dou s by dou t at constant v into dt plus dou p by dou t at constant v into dv that is one equation. Other equations that we also have noted down is dou s by dou t at constant v will be cb by t. Now what you do we can uh, replace this dou s by dou t at v is equal to cp by t and rewrite this equations. So, this equation will give you the entropy change between two thermodynamic states that is S2 minus S1 is integral of cb by t dt. So, this integration has to be performed for temperatures we can write it from T1 to T2 in other cases the integration can be performed for specific volume. And also from this previous slides we have other expressions like in the dou u by dou v at constant t is equal to t into dou p by dou t at constant v minus p one equation. Other equation we have that from TDS equations we have du is equal to C v dt into dou u by dou v at t into dv. So, now replacing this equations with dou u by dou v at constant t we can rewrite the expressions of internal energy change between two states that is u2 by u1 is equal to integral of cv dt from 1 to 2 and second part of this equation would be integral of t dou p by dou t at constant v minus p into dv that integration has to be performed from 1 to 2. So, the very basic bottom line is that we from temperature specific volume we have these relations. Now, in the second case situations we consider temperature and pressure as so instead of volume we consider the pressure as the independent properties. And if you do that how our mathematics becomes simplified and that gives the other fundamental expressions. So, here also similar logic also applies where both temperature and pressure can be varied either independently or both can vary simultaneously or we can vary them independently keeping other constants. So, here uh, we have to recall another equations from the Maxwell relations that is that involves uh, P. So, dou S by dou P at constant T is equal to minus dou V by dou T at constant P. So, this equations needs to be recalled. Then we have to start with two parameters again with entropy S is equal to function of T temperature and pressure another parameter of interest would be enthalpy there it was internal energy here it was enthalpy h is considered as a function of temperature and pressure now from these equations we can find the exact differential ds and also exact differential of dh so by expanding these equations and using this maxwell equations we find two expressions one is ds is equal to dou s by dou t at constant p dt minus dou v by dou t at constant v into dp. Other expression is dh is equal to cp times dt uh, plus dou h by dou p at constant t into dp. Then we have to recall the TDS equations involving dh and ds. So, t dh is equal to tds plus v dp. Now, substituting ds and dh in this TDS equations we arrive at the following expressions which involves left hand side is change in the pressure right hand side in the change in the temperatures. So, mathematically this equation is correct, but practically or thermodynamically how we are going to find its significance. Now, in one situation we say the change in the pressure is 0, but dt is not equal to 0. So, in that sense we can write this equation as dou s by dou t at constant p will be cp by t. Now, if dp is not equal to 0, but dt is equal to 0, then 
we can write this expression as dou h by dou p at constant t would be v minus t times dou v by dou t. So, dou h by dou p t is v minus t into dv by dt at constant p. So, from these equations we are now try to find its consequence. What are these important relations that we are going to derive for which our intention was? So, our intention was to find change in the entropy and change in the enthalpy ds and dh. So, for that we recall again those equations and try to find derive the mathematical relationships. So, from the previous slides we recall these equations one equation is exact differential ds is equal to dou s by dou t at constant p dt minus dou v by dou t at constant v into dp that is one equation. Second equation is dou s by dou t at constant p is equal to cp by t. Now, putting these equations here we find the expression of change in the entropy that is between two thermodynamic states s2 minus s1 is integral cp by t dt from 1 to 2 and dv by dt from 1 to 2 dp. And similar way we recall the another equations involving enthalpy and pressure at constant temperatures and of course, we also have the exact differential dh. And from these equations we are able to find the change in the enthalpy between two states that is h2 minus h1 is equal to integral of cp dt plus integral of v minus t into dou v by dou t at constant p dp. So, this is all about uh, the property evaluation for single phase systems. Now, we will go deep into further to find out the internal energy equations that are frequently used. And again why we require this internal energy equations because we know that the when the properties u, s and p that is internal energy entropy and pressure they are regarded as the function of temperature and volume then one relation we can frame because here the pressure is considered as an independent parameter. Other way of looking at is internal energy entropy and specific volume instead of pressure we are using specific volume as a considered as temperature and pressure. Basically we have U, S these are the important properties that need to be evaluated and parameters like pressure, volume and temperatures. So, in one case we say U, S, V they are regarded as functions of temperature and volume. In other situations we have properties U, S uh, sorry here you have temperature and pressure when you are regarded as when U, S and P are considered as properties a uh, function of temperature and specific volume then we have another relations. So, basically internal energy framing the internal energy equations we have to use this particular philosophy. Now, let us see how you are going to use it. So, for that we have to recall the again the TDS equations first law and Maxwell's relations. So, we know this from the first law and TDS equations we have du is equal to TDS minus PDV. And we have this Maxwell relations, two Maxwell relations we are considering. One is dou S by dou V at constant T is equal to dou P by dou T at constant V. And second one is dou S by dou P at constant T is equal to minus dou V by dou T at constant P. So, these things is basically we get from these concepts. Now, in one case we are dividing these equations, this change in the internal energy with respect to dv means with respect to change in the specific volume. So, we write du by dv is equal to Tds, uh, T ds by dv minus p keeping t is equal to constant. Now, when t is equal to constant this ordinary differential equations reduces to partial differential equations like this. So, instead of writing the entire expressions we are simply writing dou u by dou v at constant t is equal to t dou s by dou v at constant t minus p. 
So, this is the first internal energy equations we can uh, get. Now, here again we can recall our Maxwell relations dou S by dou V at constant T uh, that is this is equal to dou, dou P by dou T at constant V. Now, when you put this first Maxwell equations here, then we get the uh, first internal energy equations dou V by dou U by dou V at constant T is equal to T times dou P by dou T at constant V minus P. And in other scenario, we say that if we divide this TDS equations du by dp because the pressure was taken as the independent parameters then we write t ds by dp minus p dv by dp keeping t is equal to constant. Now, instead of writing this entire expressions and ordinary differential equations it is represented in the partial differential form that is dou u by dou p at constant t is equal to t times dou s by dou p at constant t minus p times dou b by dou p at constant t. Now, again here also you can recall the Maxwell's relations for this that is dou s by dou p at constant t will be equal to minus dou b by dou t at constant p. Now, when you put this equations in this uh, case 2 we get the second internal energy equations. So, you have two equations first internal energy equation and second internal energy equations. Now, we will see that what are those significance. Okay. Till this point of time we have covered many mathematical relations equations two phase regions single phase regions. Now, let us take the stock of it, let us consolidate what are their practical significance. Now, here I will try to bring your attention to basic UG level when you deal with the properties of pure substance. We deal with the property diagrams normally they are called PV diagram, TV temperature specific volume diagram, pressure volume diagram and temperature pressure diagram or phase diagrams. So, if you recall those diagrams normally we have the dome like if I say temperature volume diagram we have a dome and we consider this point as critical point. This line this dome separates liquid and vapor regions. So, we say this is liquid and this is vapor region and this is two phase region within the dome. Now, on this diagram we draw the constant pressure lines like this. Okay. So, these are actually constant pressure lines drawn in TV diagram. Okay. Now, here the question arises how did you get this data for a given situations and in fact the property relations that we have derived in this module are useful to get all these things. So, this is one such case other such case we can draw as a pressure volume diagram in the same dome we can also draw constant temperature lines. So, it is a compressor volume diagram we can draw constant temperature lines. So, these are constant T we have C P here this is liquid this is vapor and this is two phase. Now, till this point of time we are self sufficient that we have covered the expressions mathematical expressions how you are going to apply the relations thermodynamic relations for single phase region and two phase regions. So, these concepts can be useful in drawing these diagrams. Now, I am going to demonstrate that whatever relations we derived so far 
how they are useful for considering the uh, construction of the property diagrams. In other in a sense that what is the physical significance of generating the data using these equations. So, we, we uh, considered uh, for a typical case let us say it is a water at least. So, temperature volume diagrams and in a temperature volume diagrams we have just kept some arbitrary points like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. In fact, these are the points which are placed or thermodynamic coordinates on a temperature volume diagrams and that are drawn for different pressures. Now, on this diagram if I want to find out what is the entropy or at any state point if I want to find out the what is the change in the entropy, what is the change in the enthalpy, what is the change in the internal energy, how I am going to achieve it. So, this is the main objectives of our discussions. So, for that we consider 8 states as shown in these diagrams 0.1 to 8 and we will see that how the values can be assigned at each of the states based on the property relations. So, very basic things that we have we when you start with 0 0.1. So, this is a we can say saturated liquid point. So, we give some arbitrary reference value either it can be given as a 0 because when you see the changes the arbitrary has basically no role if you are referring to changes happening between two states point arbitrary datum has no role. But uh, hypothetically we can say at least that we give some assigned value either it is be 0 or some realistic number. Now, let us see that how the properties are going to be evaluated. So, we start with point 1. So, it is arbitrary datum states in which enthalpy and entropy are either are fixed or they are can be assigned value 0. Now, when you go to point 2 obviously, it is a straight line horizontally in which there is a phase change that takes place. So, when this when the state goes from 1 to 2 it is a change of phase from liquid to vapor. Uh, since it is a change of phase and of course, there is a change in the specific volume because the state becomes liquid to saturated liquid to saturated vapor. So, we can recall Clapeyron equations for a phase change process and this Clapeyron equation will give you the enthalpy change. Again from this Clapeyron equation also we can also get the uh, entropy change. So, basically when you see this data in the stream table in the background we ha I think this uh, Clapeyron equation was used to find the data points. Okay. So, this is when you reach point 2. Then from constant, so that means from 2 to 3 we want to move. So, from 2 to 3 again it is a constant temperature line. So, and but it is in a single phase regions. So, you have to recall these equations that involves entropy change S3 minus S2 this which which you derived in this class itself uh, as integral of Cp by t dt minus integral of dou b by dou t constant p into dp. And here since 2 to 3 process is a constant temperature process the this goes to 0. So, we land off having S3 minus S2 is equal to minus integral p2 to p3 dou b by dou t at constant p dp that is one expression. And for enthalpy expressions Similarly, here since there is no change in the temperatures this expression goes to 0. So, enthalpy change is from S3 to H2 is equal to integral P2 to P3 V minus T into dou B by dou T at constant P into dP. So, basically we know point 2 then from this equation we can find out S3 and H3. Now, when we know S3 and S3. So, we, we locate this point then we start moving to point 4. So, point 3 to 4 is same as the process from 2 to 3, but only difference is that here the point 2 was in the saturated vapor region, but here it is in the superated vapor region. So, pro same procedure can be followed. So, we can locate the point 4 with the coordinates S4 and H4. Now, from 4 to 5, 4 to 5 you can say it is a constant pressure line. So, when you say constant pressure line, so we can find out the TDS equations. 
So, S5 minus S4 is equal to Cp times dt by t. So, 0.5 is located. Similarly, for enthalpy also you can find Cp times t. So, Cp value that is from datum side is known to us. So, we can find look and locate the point 5. So, all the properties at point 5 can be located. Now, for 6 and 7 we can follow the similar procedure that is when you go from 3 to 4 similar process will be followed in a reverse manner from 5 to 6. Now, when you go to 6 to 7 the similar process procedure in a reverse manner needs to be followed for what we did for 2 to 3. So, with same procedures we can locate 0.6 and 0.7. Now, when we reach the 0.7 then we have to go to 0.8. So, it is again a phase change process we have to recall the Clefran equations to locate the 0.8. So, basically speaking that when you draw different values in a temperature volume diagram we have seen that these are the constant pressure lines and for all these cases of p lines for all these coordinates they can be found out judiciously by using these equations. Maybe one kind of code can be written that involves the property value change which can locate the properties or we can for which we can represent the temperature volume diagrams with the data points calculated through math these mathematical relations. So, this is all about the significance of thermodynamic property relations for constructing property tables like pressure volume diagram, temperature volume diagram, pressure temperature diagrams. Now, let us see that uh, whatever we have discussed so far how we are going to apply. So, we will study some of the simple numerical problems which is mainly dealt for a single phase situations. First problem is about uh, deriving an expressions for changes in the internal energy with respect to specific volume at constant temperatures. There are two cases, one is for ideal gas, other is for van der Waal gas. So, before you proceed further, first of all let us see that which thermodynamic equation we are going to use. So, this is required that we require the internal energy equations. So, you have to recall this internal energy equations dou u, one of the equation is dou u by dou v that is required at constant temperature and if you recall that equations it says that it is T times dou p by dou t at constant v minus p. So, this is the fundamental equation that we are going to use. So, first case we say if it is an ideal gas. So, if in an ideal gas we can recall the equation of state P V is equal to R T. From this we can find P is equal to R T by V. So, this will give you dou P by dou T at constant V is R by V. Then when you put this equation here, so you can write dou u by dou v at constant T will be T times R by V and again minus P. For minus P we can write R T by V. So, it gets cancelled. So, it is 0. So, this means internal energy is independent of specific volume, specific volume for an ideal gas. Okay. Now, second case we will see that what is a van der Waal gas. So, for a van der Waal gas, 
we all know this equation of state which is, is equal to p is equal to r t by b minus b minus a by b square where a and b are constants ok. Now, again we have to use the same concept here we need to find out what is d p by d t at constant b that is equal to the will be r by b minus b differentiation of second term would be 0. So, we get this then we can find out d u by d v at constant t would be t times r d p by t r by b minus b ok minus p minus p we can write r t by b minus b plus a by b square this is nothing but your expression for p. Now, here these two things will cancel. So, we say d u by d v at constant t will be a by b square, but still that does not uh, give our answer we want the internal energy. So, if you uh, since property changes are taking simultaneously we can recall that if u is equal a function of t and v then we can say d u is equal to dou u by dou t at constant v d t plus dou u by dou v at constant t d v right. Then this one is nothing but your C p and this one already we have find out a by b square. Then we can integrate these equations like integrating we can say u is equal to integral of d u by d t that is C v C v times d t minus integral of a by b square d v plus some constant. So, ultimately we get the expression like u is equal to integral of C v times d t minus a by b plus some constant or if you take this C v is a function of uh, C v is a constant then you can write C v t minus a by b plus some constant. So, this is how we are going to find out the expressions for internal change with respect to specific volume for an ideal gas and for a van der Waal gas. Now, second equation we are again it is in mathematical nature we are going to find the expressions for the changes in the internal energy entropy and enthalpy for a gas that undergoes change of pressure at constant temperature. So, we consider this equation of state p is equal to r t by b minus b minus a by b into b plus b t to the power half. So, we need to for two things one is entropy internal energy. So, let us start with entropy. We recall the entropy expressions S 2 minus S 1 as integral of 1 to 2 dou p by dou t at constant b d v. Now, from these equations we can write dou p by dou t at constant b would be r by b minus b plus a into twice b into b plus b into t to the power 3 by 2. So, half will become 3 by 2 and 2 1 2 will come here and these particular things we can simplify here as r by b minus b 
that you can write as a by twice b t to the power 3 by 2 into 1 by v minus 1 by v plus b. Why I am doing this? Because it will be easy for integrations. Because there will be three terms which is used in the integrations. First is this times dv. Second is 1 by v times dv. Third is 1 by v plus b times dv. Now, when you put this expression here, then we arrive at s2 minus s1 is equal to r times ln v2 minus b by v1 minus b which we get from the first expression. Second from the second expression we get twice a by twice b 3 to the power t to the power 3 by 2 ln v2 by v1 and from the third term we get a by twice b times 3 to the t to the power 3 by 2 so it will be minus minus and that is ln v2 plus b divided by v1 plus b so this integration we do for these three parts so we get this so this is the expression for uh, entropy change now we will say internal energy change we have to recall one of the internal energy equations or internal energy change u2 minus u1 is equal to integral 1 to 2 t times dou p by dou v dou t dou t dou p by dou t at constant v minus p into dv already we have find out what is dou p by dou t at constant v we are going to put it here so basically these particular parameters which is t times dou p by dou t at constant v minus p needs to be evaluated and that is equal to t times r by v minus b plus a by twice b 3 to, p to the power 3 by 2 into 1 by v minus 1 by v plus b this t into this minus p so you know p p is the equation of state we can write it as r t by v minus b plus a by b into v plus b into t to the power 3 by 2 ok so from this we this two will get cancelled and this t into dp by dt at constant v minus p becomes now 3a 3a divided by twice b into v plus b into t to the power 3 by 2 and this we can rewrite as 3a by twice b t to the power 3 by 2 sorry it will be half t a t to the power half into 1 by b the way you have done it 1 by b minus 1 by b plus b so we know this integrand this integrand has this value from this when you can put it we can find out u2 minus u1 as 3a divided by twice b t to the power half ln b2 by v1 minus ln b2 plus b divided by v1 plus b okay 
So, this is the entropy change, this is enthalpy change. Now, another work rework we can do enthalpy change H2 minus H1 is equal to U2 minus U1 plus P2 V2 minus P1 V1. So, already we have the values u2 minus u1 from this above expressions. We know p2 v2 equation of state is given. We can find out p1 v1 from this equation of state. So, enthalpy change can be calculated. So, the very basic bottom line is that for any given equation of state, the mathematical relations are very useful in deriving the different properties values and in fact this is the significance of this particular module which is thermodynamic property relations and with this mathematical relations it is possible for us that we do not have to do many experiments and most of the times we can do some limited experiments take the data pressure ball specific volume and temperatures and use them to measure or calculate other thermodynamic properties. With this I conclude, thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.